This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining me as usual is the health coach at Life Enthusiast, Martin Patella. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Good day, Scott. Good day, everyone who's taking the time to hear us. All right. So in the last couple of weeks, we've been, uh, we've been talking about retraining your brain because sometimes our brain gets things kind of wrong and then it just keeps on doing these things that it shouldn't do, which was really, really interesting with uh, Ashok Dupta. And we also talked about sulfur, which was a nutrient that most people don't talk about and has had huge impact on your health. In fact, it's really, really essential for health. And what we wanted to talk about, and so those were kind of like in the, you know, sort of the, the emotional area or the brain area, which people don't really think about too much when it comes to their physical health, and also in the area of malnutrition. And we have four pillars, which is malnutrition, kind of energetic, emotional, what's going on in the electricity in our brain, and uh, stagnation, which is just, you know, sitting for eight hours at a desk expecting you're going to have a healthy life by, by doing that for 40 or 50 years. And the fourth one, or the fourth one, but not necessarily the fourth in our list, is detoxification. And that's really, really important. And when I think of detoxification, I think of these packages that you see in the health food store that uh, you go on, you know, three, three days, five days, 10 days, 30 days, and and uh, and at the end of the time, you are detoxed. And that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about something that is hugely onerous. And before we go any further, Martin, why don't you jump in and tell us a little bit more about detoxification? What I wanted to mention is there is a difference between detox and cleansing. And yes, there is cleansing a lot of stuff that gets labeled detox should really be called cleansing. We have cleansing from the outside, which typically is just a, like I'll shampoo my hair and uh, and soak my armpits. Or on the inside, what you want to do is cleanse with things like water, good energized water, water that has not been processed in an industrial way so that it just doesn't even, uh, if it has high surface tension, it will not dissolve things in it readily. And the other product we have that's important in that department is called lecithin. Lecithin is the binder of things fat soluble. And when there's not enough of it in the digestive stream, again, cleansing doesn't work so well. Other cleansing tools are fiber, water, and some herbs. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. That's, it's yeah. good stuff, and it helps you just sweep the garage clean of the dust, so to speak. But now right. what we're going to do is we're going to go into the tissue of the body. Stuff that your body cannot get rid of, cannot cleanse out readily, it actually hides. It's like squirrels that hide nuts somewhere for later use. Your body will do that with things so toxic that it just doesn't want to handle. And it puts it in places of low circulation. And the low circulation tissues are first fat, and then cartilage, and finally bone. And that's where these things are sequestered hidden. So what we want to be able to do when we talk about detoxing is taking out those toxic materials that we've squirreled away uh, in a way that's gentle. Like we don't want you to be having a, a huge rea a reaction would look like something maybe like a bad cold or flu even. Or worse. Uh, I remember when I was on my cleansing and detoxing adventure, I took some homeopathics that were uh, strong stuff. And uh, to me, it felt as though I were walking under a glass dome. It was a sense of unreality that all of my perceptions of the world were distorted. And perceptions of the outside, but also perceptions of the inside. 
I remember that I couldn't tell whether I was urinating or not while I was quite toxic. Or I, I would put it this way. When you kick up the uh, sequestered materials, it's if you could visualize, like there's there's a lot of dust settled down on the floor and around the room. If you walk in there and just stir it all up, all of a sudden you can't even see it so dusty in the air. Well, that's what it felt like in my brain. It felt like there was a whole lot of stuff kicked up. I remember standing at the urinal, peeing, and thinking, yep, yeah, we're done. Just shake it, put it in, zip up. Oh, no, we were not done at all. It, it was still running. That was so funny because this was in my corporate days. I was in a suit and a tie and all of that. And uh, and this beautiful, large, wet spot on the front of my pants <laughs> in the middle of a day. Right. So we live in an environment in, in a society where hundreds of tons of mercury are spewed from factories every year where small pieces of rubber from tires are worn off by all the millions of cars that are running on on the streets where somebody used lead paint on the wall and you don't know or you've got all this stuff that's happening with the carpeting or the cleaning supplies you go to the dry cleaner and they dry clean and all of a sudden you've got this stuff on your on your clothes then you've got all these chemicals which are called herbicides or pesticides or fertilizers that are used in the creation of food. And then the food is in these plastic containers, which may or may not be shedding particles of plastic. And all of this stuff either gets on your skin, gets through your mouth into your lungs, gets through your mouth into your stomach, ends up in your body. And over long periods of time, these things build up, build up, build up, and we end up having the problems that we have. And in the, Ameri in the United States, there is an obesity epidemic, I would say, just in Canada as well, and certainly in certain other countries. And one of the things that is really curious to me is when you say that these toxins are put in areas with low circulation, the first one being fat, is the fat not then perhaps a symptom of being toxic or overloaded with toxins, so the body is actually protecting you. It's saying, you know what? You need to have fat to go around this toxin so that it protects us from whatever this toxin is going to do because, I don't know, I've never seen it before. And uh, the result is, is this could be one of the reasons why we're actually obese. It's, it could be we're eating poorly and high calories, low nutrition. Uh, I'm not saying this is the only reason, but all of a sudden, you start thinking of obesity a little bit differently if you think, well, you know, what if a certain percentage of the population is so toxic that the only thing their body can do to protect them is to make them obese? And absolutely, I believe it's part of the problem. But here's the, here's the dark side of it. As you try to uh, lose weight, if you change your regime and you start consuming or burning up that fat, whatever was stored in it is now going to be released into circulation. So that's going to tax your elimination organs, especially your liver and your kidneys and your spleen. But even worse, when this stuff is deposited, if your pH balance is off, as, as usually happens with older or aging people, the older they get, I mean, the, the classic sign is the osteoporosis, the thinning of the bones. When that starts happening in a body, all the stuff that was previously deposited in the bone, as the minerals are taken out to buffer the acidity, all of the toxic stuff is released into circulation. So I speculate that older folks are losing their marbles to a good degree because of the toxicity that's being put back into circulation. And so and, there are uh, multiple reasons why you want to maintain your pH balance so that your bones don't start dissolving on you. And, uh, and you maintain or at least work on detoxing whatever's already on board. 
Yeah, you were reminding me of a couple of people I know that are close to 90 and frail. And 15 years ago, that one person in particular that I'm thinking of was obese. There was, I mean, obese, obese, like really bad. And she's just been losing and losing and losing all this weight. And I think it's just a result. I don't know why. I mean, I don't think she eats less, but it's all the weight is dropping off. And of course, she can't hold her head up. So she's kind of down like this. And uh, it, she's crunched over. And of course, her, her, well, and I mean, she doesn't exercise or anything else. She can't. And, uh, and I just think about like, we never imagined that she would ever be thin, <laughs> right? Because she was so obese. And now, so I'm just thinking, you know, her body is really just wasting away. Yeah, this is probably a complicated situation that I don't think we should try and no, I'm not saying we should just analyze it, but I'm just here. all these people who are, you know, we're, you're 45, you're 50, you're obese, and when you're 70 or you're 80, you're skinny, right? What's yeah, happened? Yeah. You've just released all these toxins in your body and you cannot remove, the body cannot remove them, right? It would have removed them originally if it could have. Yes. And it can't. Right. So I guess that brings us to the crux of today's show, which is, Martin, my body is full of toxins. It cannot remove these toxins. What do I do? Right. It needs help. It definitely needs help. So there are these basic things. We need a carrier. In this case, we need water. And you will do better if you have structured water. And we discuss water structuring tools elsewhere. And then you need the emulsification, the lecithin I mentioned, that binds the uh, fat-soluble things to water. It's essentially like soap, lower the surface tension so that fat-soluble things can transport on water. And finally, you need to introduce something that's going to bind the, the toxic substances. So if it's uh, fat-soluble volatile organic compounds, such as the uh, products of jet fuel burning or or dry cleaning and then and so on then there, there you go you just you just solved it less it thin in water but if it's for instance heavy metals you need something that's going to bind the metals in the medical mainstream they believe in edta which is quite effective, but you need to use it intravenously. So that means that you're going to go for two-hour sessions, uh, plug yourself into an IV drip, right main line, and uh, you're going to uh, do probably 12 sessions like that. That's $200 each. The alternative that, that we propose is way more convenient, way less expensive, and uh, nearly as effective which is zeolite is a volcanic material that maintains negative electronegative charge on the outside, which means the body sees it as beneficial, not as dangerous, nothing to get rid of. And it also, within these little particles that have electronegative charge, there are little caves, little pockets, each of which is also electronegative. And it will attract into and onto itself electropositive particles. And all of the toxic stuff is electropositive. So lead, mercury, cesium, cadmium, these things will get attracted, held, and excreted. So it's zero. kind of like a magnet. This thing just sort of comes along and it just sort of sucks up these. Yeah. Sort of like a sponge. So like a sponge or a mop. The zeolite pure is essentially the powdered zeolite that has been micronized. One important point about it is it has to be made small enough particles so it's permeable to the cellular structures. You can buy cheap zeolite that's used for industrial purposes for a dollar a pound that's used for cleaning of aquariums and for industrial toxic spills and things like that. It's also used, I heard that it was used at Chernobyl 
to help get rid of the radiation around Chernobyl. Yes. They dumped yes, a lot they, of it there. Yes, they used it to bind the toxins. They threw it into rivers. They threw it into lakes. They dumped it on the ground. They were mopping up the the heavy metals that were being released with with the accident. So interestingly, you could use this zeolite also for soldiers who have been exposed to depleted uranium munitions. Um, you could also use it for the cesium that's escaping from the nuclear accident in Japan. Fukushima. Fukushima. Yeah. So what about things like uh, mercury? Like a lot of times, I've heard a lot of you know mercury in your mouth because of the fillings, and would it have an impact on that? Yes, it does. I've used it for myself. I mean, my own personal story was terrible mercury toxicity that I have indeed resolved using zeolite. It detoxed me, and uh, I have the data to show that I was off the chart terrible, and then I did so many months of zeolite, and then I was within near normal, and then I decided that for the rest of my life, I'm going to take a little bit of it every day. Because after all, I'm eating fish, which are swimming in the oceans. Let me, let me just sidebar into this. We export coal to China. Coal is the source of mercury. In the United States alone, 50,000 tons of mercury are released into the air every year. Uh, I don't know how much it is in China, but we ship the coal to China, let them burn it, and we chuckle that they have a pollution problem. Well, that stuff goes up into the air on the jet stream, and then it rains somewhere over the Pacific, and on a good day, it rains over California or wherever, the United States. When that happens, the heavy metals that are in those clouds are raining onto the forests. So when the forests burn, it goes back in the air here. It also rains on the lakes where we have our fish. And it also rains, rains on our fields. All of them, even the organic food, it rains on. So, so in other words, we have mercury everywhere. It's everywhere. And the zeolite will pull it out of your body. So the point is that you want to have some zeolite added into circulation all the time. It has a fairly short uh, dwell time, like three, four hours. So normally you would want to, if you're doing an active detox session, you want to take it three times a day, morning, midday, evening. If, if you're just going on a low dose, well, take it whenever. I take it just once a day on maintenance these days. But when I was doing it for serious, I was taking it three times a day. And, and it's non-toxic, so you can take as much or as little as you want. There's no problem. Well, let's talk about that. Zeolite readily absorbs toxic things. So it will absorb uh, mercury, lead, and st stuff like that. So if you dissolve the zeolite, if you break it down, like there, there's this scientific quote-unquote test by which they use hydrochloric acid, 100% hydrochloric acid, by which they dissolve the zeolite. They're saying, well, hydrochloric acid is in the human digestive system, so therefore we will emulate this process. But they use high concentration, and they dissolve the zeolite to collapse its structure completely. They dissolve it into liquid. Once, When you do that, you just take it into its individual components, and you will release whatever was already held in the pockets. So mm. if there was already some lead or some mercury in the zeolite, you will release that, and you will find it, and you can produ produce a study, which there is one study in, done in California, the Attorney General even acted on it, saying that we have proven that there is lead in this product, and for that reason, it is uh, uh, has to be reported under the Proposition 65 as contaminated. But truth is that if you only ingest it as intended, none of this gets released. 
we don't have that much chloric acid in our hydrochloric acid in our stomach to break it down to that degree. Right. So what you're saying is, is if it's going into your body and it's already got some t heavy metals in it, which is probably likely based on the fact that it's everywhere, um, it would have bound it if it was doing its job. It's still going to have empty spaces for the stuff that's not good right. in your own body, and then it's going to pull all that out and be gone, unless yeah. you drink 100% hydrochloric acid and stick it in your stomach at the same time that you're eating the zeolite. Yes. Which means you'd have a bigger problem than the zeolite. <laughs> you would be not doing well. Yeah. Okay. So the, okay, so the point about zeolite pure is that it's just the zeolite, nothing else. Uh, so if you're building your own nutritional program, add zeolite pure to your smoothies or to your other complex uh, health program. It's the best deal for the money when it comes to getting zeolite. Now, what does it taste like? I'm sure it probably has an awful taste like MSN and uh, the sulfur that we talked about uh, last time, right? No. No, zeolite has no taste. No taste, no, you can't even tell it's in there. You can just throw it into any anything you eat. And it's it's powdered so finely that you won't it won't be gritty in your mouth. Yeah, and I want to talk to that because the way I like to have it is in the morning and I I make a granola I have a granola and I pour it into a, a thing. I put some uh, yogurt in with it and then I put a a scoop of the uh, zeolite pure in it, and I mix it all up. It turns my vanilla yogurt to, or my plain yogurt to, a slightly gray color because it is slightly gray, light gray. Uh, but you can't taste it, and you can't feel it. Like it doesn't change the texture of of the uh, of the yogurt. And of course, I have granola in there, so it's a little bit crunchy anyway. But when I've just added it to yogurt, like there is no texture change. It's just like putting this soft powder on uh, on the yeah. yogurt. Boy, you're making me nostalgic. I can't eat yogurt and I can't eat granola. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, well, so then we better move. let's talk about zeolite AV. And how is that different than zeolite right. pure? So um, to make it more convenient, they put it in capsules. Zeolite AV is in capsules, and it's uh, mixed with uh, humic acid. Humic acid is very beneficial in the gut. It helps, especially with leaky gut type of situations. And it also is a um, most wonderful uh, catalytic. Um, I'm having trouble coming up with the most glowing terms in which way I would like to speak of humic acid because it's the most wonderful natural thing. Humic got its name from humus. It's the black stuff that makes living soil out of desert sand. The deaf difference between desert and living soil is the humus. And the humic acid is the black goo that makes the biggest difference. Now, the humic acid we use is uh, ancient stuff. This is 80 to 100 million years old from deposits around the country. And it's purified and uh, sterilized and made right for human consumption. What the humic acid does, it enables absorption. It's the facilitator of absorption of nutrients out of food. So does it help the zeolite then get into the system better? I think it helps the body function better, transact minerals in, toxins out. I, I don't know the exact full details. What I do know, it supports the immune system and the gut, and uh, it's antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. It uh, improves nutrient uptake. It just does a lot of good things. So if you want a multi-purpose instead of just the detoxing and you, you're concerned about leaky gut or other areas of your health, then this is something that would definitely help that. Indeed. So there's the AV, and the AV stands for antiviral. 
So especially if you have issues that give you fever or if you know that you have had something like the Epstein-Barr or herpes or, or worse, although these two are pretty bad, um, then you would want to be taking it every day, all the time. Right. And this is, again, because the zeolite is in the body just for a short period of time, three to four hours, you'd be taking it throughout the day, not just once. Right. It'd be advised to uh, take it morning, midday, evening. Okay. Cool. With water. The more water, the merrier. Right. Water is a, a big part of it. N now I'd like to talk about uh, our third zeolite product, which is Destroxin, which looks like destroy with an XIN on the end of it. Yes, that's what they call it. Yes. Destroxin is uh, also capsulated, and it's a mix of zeolite, calcium, and vitamin B12. It's cyanocobalamin, not the best form, but what the heck. It's, it's best for uh, people whose bowel is too loose rather than too constipated. So if you're tending to be constipated, the uh, zeolite AV is a better choice. If you tend to be too runny, then the destruction is your best friend because the calcium in it will uh, engage the sympathetic reaction in the digestive system, slow things down. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. I'm really excited about this one. It's the ultra-liquid zeolite. Right. So as opposed to the zeolite pure, which is just powder, this is in a liquid form. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is that important? Well, convenience, really. We have... Uh, we have children and we have uh, finicky people that just find it difficult to take things. So here we have zeolite suspended in liquid. It's mixed with humic acid and it's mixed with DHQ, dehydroquercetin. DHQ is really great at helping reduce pain. So people in chronic pain, that you know, the famous fibromyalgia and related, will enjoy that because it helps with reducing pain. The humic helps with nutrient uptake and, uh, and dealing with infections and so on. And finally, the uh, zeolite's just suspended in water, so you can easily just take it, squirt in the mouth, a few drops at a time. Or squirt in water and drink it. Cool. It's, it's the convenience. The convenience of the product. You don't have to be making your own smoothie to uh, take this. Just add it to whatever you're drinking today. And how does it taste? Tasteless. No, nothing. I mean, it will it will color your water dark, but it's without taste. Cool. So it's a very very easy way to get the zeolite in. So would you just take a, a dropper full and put it under the tongue and swallow it? Yes. Yeah, when I was starting out on my serious detox program, I remember I, I took 10 drops in the morning, then I took 10 drops at noon, and by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I was asleep on the sofa, which was a sure sign that my liver was too busy detoxing, and I had no spare capacity left to just keep me going. So and that was, for me, it was a confirmation that, that it's doing the right thing. We've got a really good uh, humic acid concentrate by Humalife that I just love. So let's get into humic acid a little bit more. It's antiviral, it's antibiotic, it's anti-inflammatory, it's antioxidant, and it uh, helps protect the cells. And But we're talking about detoxing. So what are some of its detoxing uh, functions? Well, the same thing that we have discussed all along, because it enables the uh, uh, chemical exchanges, the transactions. It's able to coax the sequestered, you know, the squirreled away bits. It's able to coax them out of hiding. It supports that. It's, it's as if you had a broom that's going to sweep up the dust particles that I mentioned earlier and it acts as the uh, vacuum cleaner, so to speak. It just holds it together 
then helps move it through the digestive system so that you, you can eliminate it safely. It's, it's just, it's a natural thing that most of us are lacking. The biggest issue I see with our current industrial lifestyle is that it's too technical, too sterile, too denatured. There's just not enough dirt in our life. Mm. And the humic acid represents this dirt. And it's the safe dirt. You don't have to worry about it somehow attacking you or, or infecting you or causing you trouble. Um, I'm visualizing a, a child, you know, one year old or less, learning about life, crawling around. 400 years ago, this child was probably crawling on a mud floor among chickens and kittens, putting everything else in their mouth and tasting everything around itself. So it was getting inoculated with all the microbes and whatever else around. That's the natural dirt. And then as it grows up... Um, it's I, out I, in the fields. It's walking through the fields and playing with the sticks and chewing yes. on everything. roots. And I'm also visualizing a, a person just pulling a carrot out of the garden and, I don't know, swishing it in a puddle yeah. in a creek or maybe just rubbing it on their shirt to just get the dirt off it. Yeah, and, and then not you, really caring if you got all the dirt, just as long as you got most of it. Right. And so then you eat it. When you do that, a lot of the microbial organisms that are naturally present in the dirt are still alive on that carrot, and you eat it, and it populates your gut. With good bacteria, which we need. Right. So that's, that's my take on humic. It's, it's the stuff that's been missing from our overly industrialized lives. Right. So just from our product page, I just want to read this one paragraph because I think it's really important. Humic acid is able to chelate toxins and remove them safely. It helps to regulate and balance your immune system and your hormones and reduce inflammation. I think that's key. And it protects your body from harmful chemicals and chemotherapy and radiation. So uh, there's over 80 minerals that are in it. It's a very potent antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-carcinogen, and antiviral uh, right. substance. And it's been shown to block all viruses, including orally or sexually transmitted viruses. It blocks proliferation of bacterial infections inhaled or ingested. It protects against muscle aches and pains, autoimmune disorders. And I mean, it goes on and on and on, but I think those are kind of the main ones that we're concerned with right now. So this was all proved in the studies in, uh, in vitro, mostly. They, they had done some animal studies. So we, yes, we do know that even uh, herpes and uh, Epstein-Barr and uh, Lyme-associated uh, infections respond in a good way to intake of humic acid. This is big deal. So everybody should be taking it regardless of whether they're obese or thin or if they're healthy or not healthy because we know everyone's too toxic anyway. Uh, what sort of, you know, what would be kind of a maintenance? What would be kind of like, you know, I need to get rid of some of these toxins. What, what are we sort of talking about here? Um, a couple ounces a month would be enough, you know, 10, 20 drops twice a day. Okay. So not a huge, you don't necessarily, you don't have to guzzle the bottle, but if you, you know, no matter how much you take, it's not going to affect you, right? It's not a toxic thing. Yeah. For, for the serious enthusiast, we also have it available in the raw powder. That's what I use. I put that raw powder because that actually includes the charcoal, right? Like the humate starts as dried out biomass. So I take it like that. And that charcoal, for people who have uh, leaky gut, if you get accidentally glutened, the um, humic acid powder is an awesome tool because it will mop up all the metabolites and all the damage and all of the overgrowing toxins and whatever else is going on in the gut. It'll just work beautifully. The cool. funny part about it, it's really black. So whatever you put it on, it just turns it into black-looking stuff. 
We're, this, pod, this podcast, today's show is brought to you by the color black. For those of us that remember our Sesame Street days. The cousin of humic acid is fulvic acid. So we have a fulvic acid concentrate. How does yeah. it differ? Right. So the uh, fulvic acid is an extract from the full humic. And it's only the small weight molecules, the small ones that are capable of passing through cellular membrane. You could sort of think of it as uh, if the humic acid were the apples, the fulvic acid would be the apple juice. It's the extract, it's the concentrate pulled out of there. And there are actually two ways to get it. One is chemical and the other one is uh, mechanical. But, and there's quite a difference. The uh, chemically extracted fulvic is a very acidic, sour tasting thing that's hard to deal with. The mechanically separated fulvic centrifuge, you know, you just s separate things by, by their specific weight, is without taste, is pleasant, and is very effective. So that's, that's the type we chose. What fulvic does, it goes inside the cells. So it's able to remove cytotoxicity. In plain language, it's like a miniature broom that gets inside your cell and helps to sweep out the garbage from inside it so that the mitochondria, the little furnaces, have the space and room to process food into energy. So tired people or lack of healing or slow healing or all, all manner of sickness is usually associated with inefficient food to energy conversion. Fulvic will dramatically improve that. Cool, and what I'd like to add to that is it attracts three times its own weight in heavy metals or radioactive isotopes. And it alters the ionic form of these toxins into non-toxic elements. So in other words, if you've got radioactive particles in your body, not only will it grab those, but it will neutralize them. So you don't have them working away, poisoning you from within. Yes. Yeah, improve on it if you can, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. So that's fulvic acid. And now what we want to do is we want to talk about liquid crystal concentrate by fourth phase. <clears throat> this has to do, this is, I think is getting back to water, is it not? Sort of. What we have here is some years ago, a fellow, the name uh, was Everett Story, came up with an alternative version of hydrochloric acid. He used deuterium sulfate. Deuterium is the heavy water. Uh, when you add an extra, uh, what's the word? Well, heavy water made into um, sulfuric acid, and then you take that and you dissolve with that acid a rich mineral. What you end up with at the end is a mineral supplement that is very rich in its ability to bind toxins and to supply minerals. So this, this product is a, is a multi-mineral supplement made out of black mica. Black mica is one of those broad spectrum minerals that the earth has produced nature has produced and its end product is its ability to agglutinate toxins agglutination is this process by which you can curdle curdle out of solution things that shouldn't be there okay so what this will do is it'll give us an easy natural and effective way to remove chlorine fluoride uh, certain types of bacteria like E. coli, heavy metals, and um, oh, some organic compounds, and even cloudiness in water where yeah. it's been contaminated. Yeah, this same product has been used in very large quantities to uh, 
purify polluted lakes, ponds, whatever, large bodies of water. Like you can use this in industrial scale. When you use it, it its primarily use was really for water filtration because when you add it to dirty water, it will, what's the word, is agglutinate. It will curdle the stuff that you don't want to drink and it will settle down to the bottom. So you just drink the top side and toss the, toss the, I don't know what, the leftovers. And You'll see this stuff on the bottom and you'll know that that's the stuff that you're happy that you didn't drink. Yes, exactly. Now, will this, this will obviously stay in the water. It may pull out some of the stuff or all of the stuff and still be in the water. What happens when you drink it? Well, it, it'll uh, turn into solid the waste that you would want to get rid of and your body will successfully get rid of it. You will. It's a, it's a, in other words, it's a good way to detoxify your body because it'll do the same thing to your body that it does to the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just put a, a drop full in a glass of water and drink it or do you put it under yeah. your tongue? Or? Some people have pushed it and taken a teaspoon of it in a glass of water. Uh, that that could sort of push on the detox. I remember talking to one lady who was fairly brave and wanted to get detox quickly, and so she was taking a teaspoon every day, and in about five days, her fingernails turned black. It wow. started, you know, just body pushing out toxins in, in all directions. Um, the, the normal use would be like seven drops in a glass of water, couple times a day. When you have toxins in your body and you're bringing the toxins out, we need to help the body actually remove or scrub itself, you know, wash it, shampoo itself, however you want to look at it, and actually remove those uh, easily. And so extra pure lecithin is one of those uh, foods that we have that is really effective in doing that. Right. The the lecithin ability to emulsify is really important. Uh, all of your transport systems in the body are water-based. Your blood, your lymph, and your other body fluids, it's all water. If you want to move anything that's fat from that, you first have to emulsify it. It's the same story as if you want to wash dishes. If there's grease on your plate, you need to put some soap or detergent on it before it will before if, before it will lower the surface tension sufficiently so that the grease will let go of the plate and be washed and this and, brings us back to our original point which was all these toxins the body doesn't know what to do with it so it surrounds it with fat so we have this water based system we have these globs of fat and they'll just glob onto something else unless we can just give that detergent, put some detergent in there and have it come out. So the lecithin does that. That's correct. It, it has other roles in the body too. It's the natural lubricant. It's, it's uh, rich in phosphatidylcholine and serine, which are the substances that make your brain and your nerves. So it's not just a simple soap. It's right. much more than that. Right. For the purposes of today, talking about detox, it's really important for that. But if you want to improve your brain and your memory and your nerves, if you want to be more creative, if you want to have beautiful hair and complexion, uh, if you want to lower your cholesterol and have healthy blood pressure, if you want to build and maintain a strong heart, if you want to be more sexually active, if you want to reduce joint pain, I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's an amazing product. Now, the lecithin, there are certain uh, ways of making lecithin where it's actually not very good, and then there are ways of making lecithin that's really good. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be a good time to kind of point out the difference because you may go to your local grocery store and say, oh, there's some lecithin, I'll just get it, and not realize any real benefit. Right. Okay. So lecithin is found in natural oils. You could extract it out of eggs. You could extract it out of seed oils. The, the more, most typical are either uh, sunflower oil or soy oil. Uh, soy has been cheaper. We have fallen out of love with it, mainly because soy is now genetically modified 
And I just don't trust it anymore. And I don't want to support the industry that grows uh, genetically modified foods. So in our business, we have switched to European grown sunflower seed. And how it's made is you extract the oil and then from the oil you separate using a um, organic solvent the, the soluble parts. So you would use either hexane or acetone as your solvents and then you need to very carefully remove them which is not that complicated. You just heat it just right, not too much so you don't spoil it but enough to evaporate away the, uh, the solvent that you started from. And we have the COA, the certificate of analysis for the product that shows us that the uh, uh, resulting lecithin is there and the carrier is not. What's important to know is that you can buy lecithin as either powder, granules, or liquid. Um, most liquids will rancid rancidize and so they put it into capsules. You don't really know. When, when it's in capsules, you can't tell whether it's still good or if it's rancid. We make sure that we get fresh stuff from last crop that's been properly stored so that you don't end up ingesting things that are going to actually add to your stress as opposed to remove it. All right. So we've talked about some very simple, very easy, very gentle ways to detox your body. Of course, you can rev it up and, and overload your body, but that's really not the purpose. The purpose is to understand that we have toxins in our body, we have heavy, heavy metals in our body, we have bacteria and viruses in our body that are maybe a little bit more than they should be, and we can remove them uh, gently and easily without having to go through a health crisis uh, where you're in bed for four days with the flu throwing up and your nose running and coughing and all the rest, and which is a miserable way to detox when you can do it in a very gentle way. And then because we live in an environment that's constantly exposing us to more and more toxins, this is something that needs to be done on an ongoing basis. So when it comes to the cleanses, you know, every year or every six months, they say, you know, do a cleanse. Well, we're saying you should be detoxing on a daily basis in order to keep your health improving, uh, you know, as a, or maintaining it, depending on where you think you are in terms of your health. And it's a really important uh, insurance policy, I think, that actually pays you in increased health, increased energy, and increased vitality, uh, better performance on your on your uh, organs and and all that sort of stuff because when you're I mean it's like the person that drinks a bottle of scotch every night you know he's putting a huge he or she is putting a huge uh, uh, strain on the liver and eventually the liver is yeah I'm gonna give up right and we don't want to do that we just want to have this nice gentle cleansing going on it's like you do that you you eat every day if you cook you do the dishes. So you don't wait till the end. You shouldn't be waiting till the end of the week to clean up all your dishes for the, you know, because, oh, I ran out of plates. I guess it's time to do the dishes. Not a good way to run the kitchen. Best way to run the kitchen is just clean up after yourself. And this is the way we look at the detox. Is this is every day, just clean a little bit, and then you don't have to worry about the big heart attack, the big problem, the big cancer, the big, you know, the big events that are happening to people all the time that cause us to say, oh, what a tragedy that is. We're really sorry to see it. Well, it's because your body's not been able to heal itself, can't heal itself if it's toxic because it's spending all of its time trying to keep the toxins down as opposed to uh, healing itself. Very good point. When you make it part of your everyday routine year-round, as opposed to this weekend warrior model, you will have a much less stress on your body, on your, on your systems, on yourself. Just take it every day. Right. Cool. So we've come to the end of today's show. I want to thank everybody for joining us and sticking with us till the end. Uh, Martin, if somebody is saying, you know, I, I need to know a little bit more information, uh, obviously go to www.life-enthusiast.com. We have lots of articles. We have lots of information on the products and the processes that we are talking about. Uh, but they want to have a you know a little more specific information to themselves. Uh,
can, where can they get a hold of you? Uh, I'm approachable and available. I can be found by phone at 866-543-3388 and uh, through the contact on the website. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.